So from time to time, as you all might know, not only am I in the print business, I'm in uh, promotions and marketing, but I also do some dibbling and dabbling and in investing in real estate. And just recently, uh, I was joined by my good buddy, Chris Haskins, along with my new friend, Mr. Dan Barrero out of New York City. And we went to take a look at a potential real estate deal, which is 10 units. It's going to be 10 houses on one city block in Baltimore, in the city of Baltimore, Maryland. So my friend Chris recorded our walkthrough. And it's an interesting look to see how a deal could be put together. And actually, Chris and Dan, in the first part of this video series, and this is going to be a two-part series, and I'll put the link right there for the second part. Uh, Dan and Chris do a walkthrough and analyzation of this potential uh, deal that the three of us are looking to do together. So I'm going to go ahead and let Chris Haskins take it over right now. Take it away, Chris. To invite you to a real estate auction, right? Uh, the kicker with this one is it's in Baltimore, Maryland, about three and a half hours here from the Tidewater area where I'm at in Hampton Roads, Virginia. So I'm looking to expand to Baltimore because the prices are a lot lower. You've got properties, 10, 20, 30,000 that you can fix them up with a small repair and rent them out. But I like to hang out with people that are smarter and richer than me, right? So you're going to meet my friends, uh, Dan Barrero, guy's been in the real estate game for 30 years, right? Uh, he's got over he's got 300 doors and my friend Chris Birch he's an entrepreneur and he also owns a printing company in Washington DC so let's go to Baltimore this is gonna be a two-part series right because there's so much content I'm gonna take you into these properties you're gonna see what they look like some have been renovated this is a 10 unit uh, auction here right almost like buying the block that's what they said you're gonna buy the whole block I mean it's stretch of properties so come on and join us for this ride as we go to Baltimore, Maryland together. You are in for a treat. Let's go. <laughs> Greetings class, it's Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. In doing that, I'm just taking you along to document my world to show you how we try to create opportunity, create market share for my for myself, my family, and my community, right? So what's going on is here is my friend Chris Birch called me the other day. He said, Chris, there's 10 units going up for auction in Baltimore. I thought that piqued my interest, right? The thing that really piqued my interest was the opening bid roundup was 150000 right but then i did a little research and i went to prop stream and i highly recommend if you don't have an online uh, database a data source just go to chrispropertydata.com that's chrispropertydata.com i'll put the link right there for you uh, and i negotiated a discount for you so you can run your own comps pull mortgage information skip trace stuff find the owner get vacant properties lean search all that stuff so when I did, when I went to PropStream, I saw that the guy paid 21,000 for these 10 units, right? So my brain computer said 21,000, 10 units, he paid roughly 210,000. How can he do an opening bid for 150? Hmm, smelled a little fishy. However, what people do is they lower the price for the opening bid and then they have something called a reserve. So, and they want to create a frenzy of a frenzy for people to come in and start bidding, right? They do it They do it all the time. So I anticipate that this property will not go for 150,000. So in this two part series, the first part you're gonna see us walking the neighborhood with Dan. I mean, he is just gonna give you some nuggets from investing in uh, Brooklyn, New York since the 80s. He's seen things come and go, just amazing. The, the, the guy's like a walking dictionary or encyclopedia. He knows what's going on, right? So as we were walking through the properties, we were actually able to meet the owners, um, the owner, he showed up. And then little did I, did I know that at the end of this thing, we were able to interface with the buyer. So in video number two, we're going to share with you the buyer. I'm going to interview the buyer of this thing, see what he paid for it, right? So each unit is 750 square feet. Three are occupied, seven are vacant. 
they're renting for $750, which means right now they're only bringing in $2,250. But the potential rent, that's 10 units times $750, potential rent is $7,500, maybe more. I don't know the area. Uh, I don't, the, 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 the seller is going to tell us what he thinks if we can push the rent out. So follow along in this one as you're going to see some amazing content from Dan Barrero. Man, this is just, just an honor for me to bring this to you as we pass 64,000 subscribers, y'all. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Take a second as you come along with this journey to subscribe, my Roundup family. Hit that like button and share with any other investors that are thinking about getting in the real estate business. Let's go check out this property. Okay, so we're here at the house. I've met my boy Daniel Barrero. What up? What's happening, Chris? Can't, I can't believe I'm here in Baltimore with Chris Haskins. I mean, he joined us all the way from Virginia. I came down from New York. We're going to be meeting Chris Burke shortly. Yep. He's from D.C. Yep. Uh, guys, you got a lot, a lot of experience right here. I mean, with between the years, right, Chris? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Looking at these uh, ten properties, see if we take them down. If we can't, that's fine. But at least we're going to learn a whole lot. Dan, go ahead. Well, you were saying something about you like this stuff. So I love this pre-war construction, right, Chris? You got to point up to that Cornish up there. That Cornish is primarily um, Dutch colonial um, architecture. The cost to do that today would be so ridiculously high; it wouldn't make any sense. But it, it's 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 great to restore it if you can. If you notice on the bottom, they have the granite. Uh, right off the footings on the foundations. Crazy. Above that, you have Crazy. the limestone be, uh, below the windows. Um, you can't find this type of architecture unless it's pre-war construction. The only problem with that, Chris, we and I have had that discussion, right? It's extremely expensive to renovate these because these they're pre-war construction. You, you have to naturally assume there's a lot of lead paint, which means you got to get certified people to remove that in addition to a lot of galvanized pipe, which has, all has to be removed and replaced with copper. Mm -hmm. My gut, Dan, as I was rolling up, right, I was nervous about this. What you were saying, oh shoot, you were saying you like this? I love this, man. Tell me about that. I love it because there's a lot of new uh, renovation. Like, for instance, that one right across the street, right? Look at that. That, you could see, was totally redone. You could actually still see the permits in the windows. Get I noticed on almost every block they had there at least one property that's being renovated with permits. So that leads me to believe that this area here is ripe for regentification and coming up. And it's really close to like the Inner Harbor area, Chris. Did you yeah, notice that? I did, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful drive. I got some footage of that too. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's, it's got a lot of potential. I mean, it doesn't look very nice right now, uh -uh. but yeah, the architecture the here, if the streets were cleaned up and, um, and you see a lot of obviously investments coming in because there's a lot of, uh, like I said earlier, a lot of new construction. Dan, tell me about when the building, I see there's a lot there that did, I feel like that one was torn down. Obviously, yeah. What, how, how do we get to, this place is so bad, it's got to just be, it's got to go. Because a lot of these down here already, they're bad. Believe it or not, man, that was, I can't talk about Baltimore, I can talk about my experience in Brooklyn, New York. There's another one. Yeah, I mean, in Brooklyn, New York, when crack cocaine came out, man. That was like the final straw. Yeah. That plus the laws that came out with the rent stabilization, where it made it so difficult for people to renovate. Uh, cost, the cost factor wasn't the difficulty. The problem was recouping your money after the cost factor yes. with all the rent laws. So yes. people were walking away from the properties, and then the properties, you know, become you know drug dens. Walking away, gotcha. Right. This is the neighborhood, y'all. We got new windows there, Dan. Yeah, it's like I said, man. On every single block, I see. Wow. One or two houses uh, with permits being fully renovated. You know, that leads me to believe there's a lot of activity here. It's just a matter of fitting yourself in at the right block and at the right number. Good like point. to me, Chris, this is perfect, right? Think about this. You take this, you give it, a, you give it an acid wash, 
uh -huh. down to the original brick with a nice brick point job. I mean, like this property has so much potential on the outside. It's got the original Cornish. You're going to have to replace wow. a lot of that wood and refinishing. But I mean, this property will look like that one right here. Chris, you see that one? Yeah. How beautiful that looks with the original brickwork? Yeah. They, 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 they That's did what that. I love, man. They did the thing on that. Okay. Dan, are you, are you thinking, I know for, are we treating this like a historical district where we're going to have to do match it up well the thing is if it's a historical district i gotta tell you the truth i won't touch it because uh, the permitting process is way too difficult and costs too much money i know you um, saw that in new york it was a beast yeah so i wouldn't even touch it but if it's not historical i personally believe you should always go with the existing architecture especially if it's pre-war construction because you're paying a tribute to all those yeah. fine labormen that put this together with their yeah. bare hands the labor work was incredible man it's like, you know, I, I hate when people knock down those cornishes and, and, and disavow the actual architecture because it's paying such disrespect to all those that came before you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this goes back to the, when the Dutch were here colonizing the United Good States. Gracious. Good Lord. Is that the deal? This is crazy. So we're here. This is it. I don't know where they went. Are you looking for your wives? Yeah. His, his wife, yes. And, yeah, she, just walk the <laughs> Thank you. So, I'm assuming you're the realtor? Or? I'm, I am a realtor. I'm not the listing agent. Okay. So, are you are you here for the open house? So, we can yeah, just walk in? Yeah, just clean up a little bit, open the mouth. Oh, okay. You're working. Okay. I'm working. Oh, it's cool. Yes. Are you uh, I haven't registered because I wanted register. to put eyes on it. But since you're here yes. and I could ask you a bunch of questions, I will try and, uh, do you mind being on? We do. We sorry. we also do a YouTube channel. Each one of us educating investors, real estate investors. Okay. Would All you right. like to be on it? Sure. Okay. Right. <laughs> ask me easy questions. I'll ask you easy questions. <laughs> they can hear you. <laughs> you let me know when. Hit it. Yeah, they can hear you. It's rolling. Because uh, they'll be able to hear her without the mic. They can hear. Let's stay right there. So, what's your name? I'm Ann. Ann okay. Dan Barrero, Chris Haskins. What up? Likewise. Um, so, tell me when you're ready. Hit it. Here with Ann. She's actually not the listing agent, but she's the list. She is the agent here showing the properties. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, and she's going to be giving us all the information. So, Ann, give us tell us something about these ten properties. There are already. Um, all the hard work's been done. Okay. So the non hard work means define that. Yeah, please right. define the okay. hard work. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, the the non-paying tenants um, have been asked to leave. So we have now three tenants who are um, solid and uh, take good care of the properties and pay the rent on time. Um, we've had two properties who have been uh, renovated already. So two are impeccable. You you can get to see uh, 1609. Um, and then that leaves you with only let's see, one, two, three, cat, cinq, five properties and six that um, are a bit of TLC. Gotcha. So really, the whole bunch of Are we going to be able to get into the homes that have tenants in them? Uh, we can. Um, I will try and get to 1607. Okay. But you will see one that um, was tenanted recently. Okay. One that um, has been. Um, up a little bit, right? The, some of the brick, the, the walls have been taken down a little bit, so you can see some yeah. of the work has been done. Yes, and sir. then one that's totally done, ready to go. Um, we have contacted the VA. Um, um, so are you guys wholesalers or what? We are, I'm actually, I, I'm, buy I buy, we buy with our own money. Um, sometimes we wholesale. This here would be a total investment to keep. Um, yeah. This would be long term. But yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward play as a rental. Okay, so what are you getting? What are you getting currently, and what should you be getting, assuming <coughs> the properties were renovated? You should be getting nine hundred a piece times ten, nine grand a month. Okay. That's what you should be getting. And what's the square footage per unit? Seven hundred square feet. That's top and bottom. The one bedroom, some are two. You can see from the bump out in the back which ones are two. Okay. For the twos, you can get a little more. And what's the parking? Um, parking park. here, yeah, it's all street parking. So. so the tenants, uh, everyone tenant can post this part there, but. How right difficult now. is it for like uh, sanitation to get in and out with street parking? Um, you mean for 
street cleaning? Yeah. Well, when they come pick up the garbage, right? On the on the street? Through here. Through here. If they're a car park. You can't you can't park here. Oh, you, you park here, you'll get towed. Okay, so this is park, not this not this street. When you say street parking, those now are at the end of the blocks. blocks. Okay. Right. You can't park here. It's not. It's forbidden. These, these are illegally parked. There's a sign there. Okay. So there's only street parking for these units. On there the is no off street parking. There on the no corners, way. you can't park on the block here. Yes, gotcha. because otherwise, sure sanitation this. trucks, I'm assuming, and yeah. emergency service wouldn't be able all to come that, through. Gotcha. But if you wanted to be creative, you could acquire this little the lot. The city owns this lot. Okay. Um, we, could, we could easily put. Have you inquired already? Cars. Maybe no, three the cars city, like this. You know, the city is just moving real slow like right this. now. Okay. That's With right. Stuff. I mean, um, That's right. They, That's were right. Supposed to, they were supposed to, to get it to me a while ago. Because if you own if you own a if you own a lot if you own a building next door to a vacant lot that the city owns a vacant you have the right to purchase it for a thousand dollars as an investor five hundred dollars if you're an owner occupant uh, but right now the city is just and what about is this the same thing here as well so he's talking party. about this that's owned by a private party yeah he's from New York yeah. Yeah. yeah we get a lot of we got a lot of New Yorkers inquiring about this block. yeah I got to tell you the truth man I love this architecture it's, it's cool man and it's cheap yeah it's cool and it's cheap and where are you from originally from Germany. Okay. Yeah. And where are you from originally? That Belgium. What Belgium. makes you exit the these, accent's awesome. My friend. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about um, leaving the country. Really? Yeah, I'm thinking about going down to Brazil. Okay. We have, we have some land down there. Okay. Some coffee and cattle. And, uh, Holy cow. Nice. Yeah, 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 something about going down there for a little while. Okay. Yeah, I've, been, I've been grinding. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The man says, going to Brazil. He's got some land with coffee and cattle. This is why I like to keep my feet in the streets y'all and I want you to do the same I would never have bumped into a gentleman like this that owns land in other countries does farming in other countries if I was not in the streets and actually doing a little bit of traveling right so I'm urging you I'm stressing you get out you know I know we're in this virus thing but you wear your mask you gotta rub elbows with different people that from different lifestyles okay that guy's going to Brazil I wouldn't have met him if I wouldn't have gone to this auction how long do you own the properties here? A year on this one. Okay. I got a lot in Baltimore. Are you looking to get rid of those as well? Or? It's the last one. Oh, really? The last of the Mohicans. These are the last of the Mohicans, yeah. Yeah. Two more closing next week. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. What's well, a good time to sell, bro, as you I know. Think so, yeah. It's low rates. We'll keep doing flips. Okay. Yeah, there's, still, there's still spreads in the flips. Okay. The rentals are good too, but it's, you know, it's, it's a hustle. It's a grind. Now, on your rentals, are you doing area. Section 8 or are you doing straight Mostly market? Section eight. Mostly Section 8. Section 8 is your best bet. Here too? Uh, here, no, because I, I kept two existing tenants. Those two, they're each paying set, or seven, 750 and 700. Okay. And then he's paying uh, 750, their market rate. And then this one, I have a Section 8 tenant lined up. Okay. It used to be a Section 8 tenant in one of my other houses. It's going to move over here. Sounds good. Baltimore is, is, a, is a whole different game, man. It's Apparently so. Game. Now, when you did these, the, I see you did the exterior. Did you do the roofs as well? I did one roof. That's a new roof on the one that I did. Okay. And this one's patched, the one I did. The other ones all need to be redone. They all need to be redone? What other major work needs to be done? I mean, I don't consider roof major work. Um, rubber roofs? The rubber roofs, yeah. You, what do you do? The torch down on them? Or? I do, yeah. Yeah, torch down rubber roofs. I mean, these, these all, it's, it's pretty straightforward. They're small houses. You know, it's about 30000 in renovation to get them to like what I did. So times six, because there's six vacants. All right. Grand. What type of foundations are these, bro? They're brick. Cellar. I'm yeah. talking about all the a se a cellar. Okay. Yeah, there's basements. Yeah. But are they are they rock foundation or are they uh, brick foundation? It's a brick. If you go to the basement, you see brick. Yeah. Brick walls. Because I know a lot of them have the rock foundations, the old rock foundations. Mm -hmm. Now these ones aren't poured. They're how how deep how deep are they as far as headroom? Six feet. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, maybe five and a half. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to live down there for sure. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. But some people do that. It's crazy. You're, not, you're looking at about a 10,000 number. Are you going to say hello? About 10 my wife, you know, her sister. On your, on your sweat equity, right? Yeah. And your sweat equity, which people are doing. So we just happened to run into the realtor here that's working with the seller, and you just saw the owner of the properties, right? So the biggest thing that I'm noticing here is there is no parking. You get a good, good uh, pan of the street here. Very tight street, right? Okay. And... In order for you to get your car in here, you got to park down there. Look so how far that is. To I'm just going to wait for Chris. So you got to think in. about it. Do I want to get the groceries? Well, let me see. I guess you could. I'm going to keep your car. So you, are you very active in this car. area? Mm -hmm. So I I can, I can, I can you send me whatever you think is good? 
So what is this, the living area, I would presume? So this is a two-bedroom. Two-bedroom. One bath. Two bedrooms upstairs. The bathroom is here on the main level. It's got the bump out. You can see it from the outside. And there was a tenant in here. When you say the bump out, what do you mean by that? You, you'll see from the outside, the kitchen is extended okay. out. Cool. Okay. This is the one that's refinished next door. So you liking this, huh, Dan? I love this. This is like, like this excites me. I know, I know most people here think when you're looking at this, you guys are gonna think this is crazy. You can, you don't got a screen, Dan. Okay. I'm not saying you are. I'm just, <laughs> I mean, you don't got it. We're gonna get the mic right on your neck. Uh, babe, but I personally, I personally love this, man. Dan, so, I'm feeling bouncy when I'm walking. Yeah, you're gonna. This is. You, you could feel it, right? You're gonna yeah. have to replace some beams here and figure out what the problem is. It looks like they may have had water damage here at one point. So I'm bouncing. Uh, that's, that, that, that scares me to death. So I want to know what you think about that. Well, we, you'd have to get to the basement to look at that. All right. Babe, what do you think about this kitchen? That's nice. My size. Very good. Should have brought my damn flashlight. Got it, man. Oh, you got it, man. Can you go in there, Dan, so we can get a, uh, get a picture of it with the camera? What's wrong, Rachel? Can you get the, get the uh, bathroom with Dan with the light in there? What's wrong, babe? Get the tub, Dan. This is total gut, Chris. And like you said, the floor is bouncy in here as well, it too. Is. Yeah. Oh, that scares me to do. Yeah. Or they could just have a half inch plywood. It's possible, but usually it's, there's a beam problem. If you know. Hey, how are you, man? Good. 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 Can so, we go downstairs? Yeah, yeah. Danny, light down there? No. No? Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> is it pitch black? Oh. It, Shit. Yeah, make your way down, brother. I can get the camera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you go in first. I'll go first. So you see these laughs here, Chris? I do. That, tell means, them, tell them that means the property is mostly struck a light upstairs, you could assume. Which creates a lot more de a lot more dust and a lot more cost. Well, not only that, it's we hard as hell to match it up. Yeah. Well you don't. We rip it all out, go down to the beam, and then you have to square off the beams. We usually use two by fours or two by threes to make them leveled out. I'm feeling real claustrophobic right oh, now. Man. The problem why you feel the shaking is because these are two by sixes. Yeah, but they're two by sixes instead of being two by eight. These? Yeah. I don't know, Dan. These are not sturdy. They are sturdy, but they just need some support. That's it. But they look pretty clean, man. You got some new plumbing down here, Dan. Uh, new hot water heater. They did something. This one, I think, was already uh, rented. Yeah, it's all PVC, no This hard. is rented? Sheesh. I hate to see the ones that ain't rented. Yeah, this is all PVC down here. Yeah. Dan, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loving this structure here. I don't see any cracks. I'm loving it as well. I don't see any cracks either, man. No cracks. And these are real two by sixes. Something's going upstairs, though, Dan. This should not be bouncing. This is a two by... The spans are too far apart. That's the problem. But this is this real wood here. Doesn't matter. The spans are too far apart. That's the bouncy part. So this is not a huge, huge problem. No, you could use three quarter inch ply and and then put some support in between, and that'll take away the shaking. Got it. Well, it should at least. I'm gonna go up, Chris. This is crazy, yo. We don't have this stuff in Dallas, Virginia. Hampton. Oh yeah. Hey! Wow. How you doing? <laughs> oh I'm no! What? You got some on your head! Is it alive? Yes! Is it alive? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, see, babe, these stairs, I would be dead. Yeah, that's what we're gonna start putting in this. They definitely have to rethink these steps. That one's not the cutting with it. Yeah, it's grandfather, then. You can do this. <laughs> it's grand. I mean, they're not gonna make you change the steps, but. Hey, Dan, Dan. I'm up here, brother. I would bust my butt trying to get up here. <laughs> so Look at these stairs. I got to tell you the truth. The owner we just spoke to downstairs, right? He was pretty lit. It do sound like he was real honest. He was, but I got to be honest with you. There's more than 30 grand per unit on this. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more than 30 grand per unit. Yeah. Over here. That's so, the, the guys, this is another investor that's looking at the property, I assume. Yep, 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 Where are you from, man? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've seen a big change? Oh, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. I uh, left for a little while. 
for maybe about 10 years and then came back. And some of these areas, you know, totally turned over and some of them went from, you know, some yeah. good areas to maybe not so good. How is this two bedroom when I got to walk through a bedroom to get to a bedroom there? They call these railroads? railroads yeah. yeah. So yeah, from Virginia, you don't see this, but in cities. What's a railroad? Yeah, the railroads are where you have to walk through one bedroom to get to the next. I don't want Sometimes, that. like in New York City, you may even have to go through the living room, dining room. I've seen then you go, kitchens. yeah, as well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm good, I've seen enough here. Yeah, I've seen enough, but this is definitely more than 30 grand per unit. So I far, thought, let's yeah. go see the other one. Dude was uh, pretty- Yo, thank you, man. Okay, so you've seen inside of one unit. So in part two of this series here, you're gonna see inside of some other units that are completely trashed, right? You, go, you are going to meet the buyer. He's gonna break down for you how much he paid, why he paid, what is his cash on cash return, his ROI, all that stuff. I want you to meet this guy because we're getting to know him too. So you're, you're gonna know why he paid what he paid for it. So uh, November 28th is when the next part two will be coming out. Make sure you're subscribed. You do not want to miss this information. It's going to be life changing if you're interested in, uh, in creating wealth and dealing with multifamilies. Listen, subscribe to the channel, like the content. I'll see you next time on the next video. Peace.